What's up, you guys? This is Johnny of Johnny Music, a division of Johnny Cell Productions here with the one and only Jensen Organist, a.k.a. Rob Lipinski. And we're here in beautiful Berrien Springs, Michigan, in Andrews University. We're currently here in a study room in a dormitory where I'm staying here in Andrews University, and we found this to be the perfect spot for us to do a our first Q&A together. Since this is, our, this is our first time actually meeting with each other, we might as well take the time to get to know each other, especially with our audiences. And so, thank you very much, uh, Rob, for being here. You're welcome. So, our first question for this Q and A is: uh, How uh, how did you get interested in the organ, Rob? I was I've been a musician pretty much all my life. I got started with piano when I was six years old. Grew up uh, in a church, and so grew up hearing the organ in church every Sunday. When I was I think in third or fourth grade, we actually got a demonstration one day, and the organist had said, you know, if we have time at the end of this, you know, we'll let you guys come up and play a little bit. And of course, we ran out of time and I never got to do it. And so I always had wanted to. And then, you know, I was involved with the church choirs mm -hmm. and working as an accompanist for them. And so the organist um, had heard me play and called my parents one day and said, you know, I think Rob has what it takes to be an organist, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, would like to see if he'd like to be interested in taking organ lessons. And I absolutely jumped at the chance because, of course, I remembered that missed opportunity from when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And so I started taking organ lessons when I was 12, mm -hmm. and I've never looked back. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> now for a second question. Uh, what led you to take a non-traditional path uh, with organ music? I have spent... Most of my career as an organist in what you'd call a traditional path. I've studied classical organ music. I've studied with um, different college professors when I was in high school, in addition to the regular lessons. I went to Indiana University, um, where I have a bachelor's of music and organ performance, and all of this being classical music. My ultimate goal is to be a performing organist. You know, I, I love going out and giving concerts and just getting to share this fantastic instrument with people, in addition to being a church organist, which comes with the territory and I love doing. Um, but it's that's just kind of a different facet of what I do. But so I've always had this, this itch to be a performer. And the traditional way that you go about getting there is by going through and competing. You know, there are a number of major organ competitions, both um, you know, within the United States and international. And so, you know, I have entered a number of those over the years and they just, they require a ridiculous amount of time in preparation. And generally they say, you have to learn this piece, this piece, and this piece. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you get beyond, you know, rounds two and three, then you maybe get to pick one or two that are your own. So I've gone through and done that and I've discovered in that process that I hate competing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I have a slightly competitive nature as it is, mm -hmm. um, but just, you know, to, to do something like that and to sink so much time into it, I mean, it has its own rewards, you know, because you learn a lot of great music, you learn a lot about yourself in the process, it's music that you can use, um, you know, for the rest of your life at that point, you know, but if it doesn't have the payoff, then you're back to square one, you know, and you've now invested anywhere from six months to you know, a year and a half of your life into this competition mm -hmm. for it not to pan out and you to be sitting right back where you started. And so after doing about three of those, I had finally had enough. I said, you know, this isn't working. I don't like doing this. You know, I, I, I know what my level ability is. I know that I can play these pieces. I got to hear a lot of other organists, you know, especially people my age. And I mean, there is just a ton of talent that is out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, you know, I'm never going to get through this, mm -hmm. you know, the traditional way. Yeah. That's probably not quite the way to phrase that, mm -hmm. um, you know, saying I'm never, never going to do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I guess part of the thing is, you know, with not doing competitions while, while I was in school, now I have the factors of I have a church job, I have a school job, I teach privately, I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, I have all these demands on my time, so I don't have 10 hours a day to practice. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to be successful in, in competing, you have to be able to devote that kind of time to it. Mm -hmm. And I just don't have that kind of time. And so um, probably about four years or so ago, I started looking into other avenues of other musical interests that I had um, outside of the organ and trying to see if maybe there was a path that would lead me there with doing music that maybe more people recognize, because mm -hmm. unfortunately, the classical organ world, not very big. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, if, you know, you walk up to your average person on the street and say, Louis Vierne, they look at you and go, 
I'm, I'm sorry, who? You know, they might recognize Bach. I think most people would recognize Bach, although I think it takes a certain amount of patience to listen to Bach. <laughs> and so, you know, one of the things that I've always enjoyed is movie music, heavily inspired by John Williams. It was one of my big influences. And so well, I started examining, you know, what the capabilities of the organ were. I'm like, you know, this is, it's a, it's a one-man symphony orchestra. Um, you know, I mean, and you look all the way back to Bach, who was writing transcriptions of concerto, concerti for, you know, for strings and for orchestra. Um, in fact, every single one of the concertos that Bach wrote um, is a transcription of another piece. Um, two were Vivaldi concertos, um, and I don't remember off the top of my head who wrote the others. One of was one of his employers, I know that. Um, he was kind of sucking up to that one. <laughs> um, you know, so it's been a long history of transcribing orchestral music for the organ. And I said, okay, well, let's take that and apply it to something modern. A number of years ago, I heard um, organist Tom Trenny do a, um, he, did, he came and actually did a recital at the church I was working at. And the first half was traditional classical music. And the second half, he did improvisations to two silent films. And I thought that was really neat. And I've heard that before. And it's, I, I think it's always one of the coolest things to experience is um, you know, the silent film with live organ music. A lot of people don't know that that's the way cinema started, you know, is you had, you know, these theater organs that played, you know, and provided the music for it. I was really kind of inspired by that, but I am a horrible improviser. <laughs> it is not one of my skills. I will easily admit that, um, and I'm okay with that. But then along the same time, um, you know, I live, I live in Grand Haven, Michigan, so I'm in close proximity to Grand Rapids, and the Grand Rapids Symphony has been doing these. Symphony goes to the movies. There's, that's what it is. Right. Um, and so what they were doing is they were taking modern films like Star Wars, um, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, oh, yeah. and they were playing the music live and showing the movie. Yeah. And I was like, like, this is so cool, and I've seen them do a number of those concerts, and it's, it's just, it's absolutely amazing to go and to hear these film scores live. Yeah. And I said, all right, what if we combine the two? What if we take what the organ used to be, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, with the silent movies, mm -hmm. and let's do, you know, what, what the Grand Rapids Symphony is doing, but on the organ. So let's take an orchestral film score, and let's put it on the organ, mm -hmm. and let's show the movie and play the organ. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so then I'd have music that I'm working from, this thing that no one else in the organ world is doing. There are several, there are several fantastic improvisers who go out and do the silent films. So I'm like, nobody's doing this. It's like, maybe I could do this. Like, this might be kind of my niche. And so as I'm, as I'm starting to pull all this ideas together and, you know, everything's just kind of bouncing around inside my head. of like, where do I want to go with this? You know, I, I, I need something because the traditional path is not working. Uh -huh. And that was about the time Frozen came out. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, and I, I instantly fell in love with the movie. Um, it, it quickly jumped to my number one Disney animated film. And so I was like, let's do this. Let's take this film score and arrange it for the organ and let's do it. And everybody, everybody knows and loves Disney. Everybody knows and loves this movie. Mm -hmm. The music from it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let's see if we can do something with this. So I started working on arrangements of the different songs, um, you know, and just kind of preparing and, you know, seeing if it was even possible. And, you know, a lot of work went into it, but, you know, found fairly early on that the music was very adaptable mm -hmm. to the organ. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so kind of worked through three of the major songs from it. And by complete random chance, I was kind of searching for videos on YouTube, trying to find, like, just the voices, because you could play it along with the movie, you know, but you still have that orchestral track that's in there. And by complete chance, I found someone who had gone through every song in the movie, and I, I don't know how they did it, but they removed the orchestra parts and they left the singing and the sound effects. Wow. I think I might know how they did it, but that, that's not important for right now. And so yeah. suddenly I had a medium to actually be able to practice this and to, you know, and to put it to the test and see if it worked. And it did. And I was like, okay, I think I might be onto something here. Mm -hmm. And so um, I actually contacted the Grand Rapids Symphony because they had just done a Disney movie and I don't remember which one. 
might have been Fantasia. But so they're, they had just been working with Disney. And so I talked to someone with them, you know, and asked them, you know, about the process of doing that and what it was like and what the response was to it, you know. And one thing I have learned, you know, in the course of my life is never be afraid to ask for something. Because the worst someone can say is no, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, to interject what you were going to say is that uh, whenever you uh, get into any rejections, just, uh, you know, move on. If uh, nothing really goes your way, uh, yeah, pretty much if, uh, yeah, you pretty much already said it there, that once uh, someone says no, that should not be uh, the end of the world for you. You just keep going. Exactly. Yeah. There's a meme going around right now. Oh, it's like meme. when, uh, <laughs> you know, when life closes a door, open it back up. That's how doors work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, that should actually be a really good thing to know about. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. So, you know, so I get to, you know, the end of my conversation um, mm -hmm. with this woman, and I'm like, all right, I, gotta, I just have to ask this. I said, you know, is there any chance, you know, you could pass my information along or maybe even give me the name and the contact of the guy you work with at Disney? Mm -hmm. She said, sure, I would be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Good. So she gave me his name and his email address, and so I sent him an email, and I kind of outlined, you know, what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he came back and he said, this is a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. However, we have our hands, you know, as Disney as a company has their hands in so many different performance venues yeah. that unfortunately right now, there is no way we could license an individual to be able to do something like this. He's like, I like the idea. You know, we might be able to work something out, you know, on that, but I, I, I just, I just can't make this work right now. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. I said, that's fine. You know, um, at least I kind of got my foot in the door with somebody and floated the idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a nice saying around that at Disney that, uh, no good idea ever dies. Yes. It just kind of gets put off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> Let's sit, let it sit there and bring it back when the time is ready. So that was kind of disappointing. But, you know, at this point I'd started doing the work, um, you know, with the music. And in the meantime, I had done an arrangement of a uh, Pirates of the Caribbean medley. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of started working with that. And this is in the midst of everything else that I was doing. Yes. Like I said, this was, this was still a number of years ago that I kind of started formulating this and playing around with it. So I kind of got to a point where I had done as much as I could do with Frozen and I had Pirates and I had performed them and they were really, really well wow. um, received. But at this point, it was coming up time. There was one major competition sponsored by the American Guild of Organists that I had always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And as I was looking at the eligibility requirements, I discovered that I was in the last year that I was going to be eligible for it. Ooh, wow. um, and it was every two years. I said, I will regret it forever if I don't try to do this competition. This is the one that I have always dreamed of doing, so I'm going to do it. So I kind of came up with, I, I called it my two-year plan at the time. I was going to spend a year working to this competition. If that didn't work, I was going to spend another year trying to make, you know, something happen with that. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, if this wasn't taking off, I was like, I think I need a new career path. Mm -hmm. And so went through the year of the competition, didn't, didn't go, <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't make it beyond the preliminary round, mm -hmm. you know, spent the time trying to, you know, make stuff work with Disney. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, my timeline's a little off because those discussions that I had were kind of part of this, <laughs> you know, and so kind of had come to the end of my two years mm -hmm. and I was like, where do I go at this point? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I've kind of run out of options. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't do the thing that I really wanted to do, you know, as far as a performance opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I really, I'm really enjoying doing this kinds of music. Um, you know, and Disney has just so much fantastic music. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I've been heavily involved in, you know, different little Disney communities and groups that are out there. And so... Um, I was actually driving to Florida and I do a lot of my best brainstorming when I drive and I was like, okay, I need something here. You know, I want to perform. And I hadn't, I hadn't done a recital in about two years at that point. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I said, my, my biggest challenge is, you know, if I set a big goal, like, okay, I'm going to do a, an entire recital of all new music. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a year's worth of work. And so I don't structure time well like that. Yay, I have this big project, so I need to work on it a little bit at a time and a little bit at a time. That wasn't going to happen. I said, okay. So, like, if I go classical, you know, I do this, you know. And, you know, I was like, okay, well, what if I did, like, non-traditional music? You know, what if I did, what if I did, like, an all-Disney recital? I was like, okay, this is great. You know, and this, this, this might be something to pursue, you know. Do music that is recognizable to people outside of the organ world, 
And they'd be like, oh, hey, maybe we'll come and hear this. <laughs> but again, I was at the same problem that I had with doing a full recital is, you know, not only do I have to learn them, but I have to write them. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I was like, I just don't know, you know, with, you know, with all my jobs, you know, it, I don't know how practical this is going to be. Mm -hmm. And, and that was when I got the idea for a YouTube channel. And I said, this is something that I could do. I could do it for six months. I could do it for a year and I could do one arrangement a month. This is something it'll give me, you know, short term projects mm -hmm. that I can completely focus on that project and then move on to something else. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I, I set myself up for a year. I said, you know, what? I'm going to try this for a year. And I said, at the end, it'll either be, you know, it'll have been fairly well received and I'll be, you know, an overnight sensation on YouTube. That's uh, what we all dream of, right? Uh, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Sometimes it usually doesn't go like that. It usually, for most uh, YouTubers actually does take a lot, a lot longer, like years for them to get to where they are now. So it does take a lot of patience. Yeah. And that, then that's what I kind of learned. And I didn't, I didn't expect to be an overnight sensation. Uh, um, um, and with recent success that I've had, mm -hmm. I'm satisfied with this level of success. I don't think I can handle it anymore right now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I think I might uh, send you some sources for you to be able to uh, handle uh, that kind of anxiety. Uh, there are some things I'll definitely send you over. For uh, people like you and others out there, um, if, uh, if, for others out there who are also experiencing a similar to what Rob's doing, I'll be sure to also leave uh, links down in the description for you guys to... Uh, give them a watch as a way to learn how to, you know, handle those peaks of anxiety of, you know, getting, you know, success really quickly. I'll be sure to do that for you guys. So, yeah. Just wanted to mention that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like, oh, people are suddenly watching me. <laughs> suddenly, I got to be really, really careful about what I'm doing and what I say. Uh -huh. And I can't have mistakes in these songs anymore. <laughs> You know, I mean, and I, and I, and I do my performances live. And mm -hmm. so there are mistakes from time to time, yeah. which some people are all too quick to point out, mm -hmm. but you know what, that's, you know, that's the nature of being a live performer. Yes. Um, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of getting off topic. So I set myself this goal. I'm like, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this for 12 months. I said, at the end of the year, I'm either going to know if I love this or hate it. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll, you know, I have, I might have some success on YouTube. I might have a lot of success. I might have no success. <laughs> I said, at the end of this, though, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be, it's, it's a fun project to work on. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, I will have enough music for a full Disney program. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I want to, you know, try to start marketing myself in that regard, mm -hmm. I'll have a program that I can do. So that's what I did. And so I went through and I did 12 different arrangements. I think I might have, and I had a couple extra things that I went in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and had, had some limited success with it. I think I set myself a goal of... I think 2,500 subscribers when I started. Ooh. And, you know, I was yeah. like, and I have no idea. Like, I don't know, you know, I was very new to YouTube at that yeah. point. And like, I don't know, yes. don't know how any of this works. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if this is like a ridiculously low goal. I don't know if this is a ridiculously high goal. And I think by the end of the year, I was about 250. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I finished that first year, um, which was last year. And it was kind of like, all right. Um, you know, definitely didn't have the success that I had hoped for with it. You know, I've, I've had a decent response to it, mm -hmm. you know, and the people that have been watching me have been very supportive of it. Oh, yeah. Um, I said, you know, but it's definitely, it's definitely not quite gotten where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Expectations. exactly. And so I was kind of like, all right, so where do we go? You know, cause I was, you know, I knew I was having work stuff that was going to be picking up and I said, all right, let's give this six more months, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think I, I think I had set myself a goal. I said, you know, I'm going to do this through June mm -hmm. and I want, I want to double the numbers that I have. If I have 500 subscribers by the end of June, I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. And then my first video pirates started getting suggested by YouTube and I passed 500 almost overnight. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, and yeah, and so it just, it, it kind of took off really fast. And, you know, as you said, you know, suddenly I was like, okay, people are watching now, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, and I had kind of planned out, you know, I had planned out all six months of arrangements that I was going to do, because I have to be thinking ahead of time, you know, what I want to do and how I want to do it and all of that, mm -hmm. you know, and suddenly I have people going, I want to hear this song. I want to hear this song. I want to hear this song. And I'm like, requests. yeah, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I love being able to do the requests, you know, but, you know. 
it's a long process. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you've, you've got to write the arrangement and then you've got to learn how to play it and then you've got to record it mm-hmm. and edit it and all that, you know, and it's not just something that I can do in a week. This is everybody coming in on Pirates. It's like, play Davy Jones, play Davy Jones. Which you suddenly also recently did. Which I did. So I, you know, I got through what I had said and I'm like, all right, we're going we're gonna to take a look at Davy Jones. Um, which is like the perfect piece for the organ because half the piece is organ already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, I had a great response to that. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and so, you know, and that's kind of where I am. Mm-hmm. So, you know, oh, I am absolutely going to continue this, um, mm-hmm. you know, not just through the end of the year, but beyond. And part of, and part of, you know, my yes. inspiration into doing, mm-hmm. um, Disney music, and you know, one of my I didn't, and I haven't, I didn't talk on this earlier. Yeah. You know, what what part of why I got to mm-hmm. um, the non traditional, you know, is obviously I want to be a performer. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's such a cool instrument, oh, yes. and everybody who sees it says that. I don't know one person who has been like organ, really? <laughs> that instrument's boring. Yeah. Um, you uh, know, yeah. but I would beg to differ <laughs> on those people who think the organ is boring. Is definitely not boring on our books. If you don't believe us, check our content. You'll be amazed. Absolutely. One of the things that I want to do is is to be able to bring the organ to a wider audience. Mm-hmm. And I have said all along, classical music is not everyone's cup of tea. Of course. Honestly, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit this right here. Yes. Um, I think I've admitted it to my audience before. But mm-hmm. classical music... Mm-hmm. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love classical music. Same I love right. classical organ music. I love playing it. Mm-hmm. When I get in the car, it is not what I am listening to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can, uh, I personally do like to listen to classical music sometimes because it does calm my nerves when I want to calm and focus on driving, but to each their own on that. But yeah, what were you going to say? Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, you know, I, I love going to classical concerts, mm-hmm. um, you know, but I grew up listening to, you know, pop rock and, yes, yes, you know, yes, stuff yes, like yes, that. Yes. And so, you know, you know, that... That music a lot, you know, kind of was an influence on me when I was younger mm-hmm. and still is to this day. Because, nice. like, you know, this is, you know, you look at, take somebody like Billy Joel, mm-hmm. you know, or Elton John, yes. known around the world, loved by, you know, mm-hmm. a yes. much bigger group of people than oh, the yes. organ world. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Classical me- organ music is great, but go out to the random guy on the street and say, hey, come listen to a classical organ music concert. I'm like, thanks, I have other things to do. <laughs> yeah. You want to come here, Pirates of the Caribbean, on an instrument that you've never heard it on before. Uh-huh. And so I thought, you know, this is a way to kind of bring it to a larger audience. And this is, you know, kind of what you're doing as well. And this yes. is kind of how we, we met, oh, yeah. um, you know, through non-traditional music oh, yes. um, on the organ. Oh, yes. And, you know, and one of the coolest things that I've discovered in the last year and a half mm-hmm. is just what you can get away with on the organ. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So... Um, yeah, I know I've, this has been a very long-winded answer to that. <laughs> oh, no um, worries, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, so, but that's, that's kind of how I ended up on the path I'm on. And, awesome. Yeah. Okay, now for the third question. That's an <laughs> awfully long answer for number two there, but that's a really good answer. Feel free to edit that for a time. <laughs> uh, we'll see. As for the next question, which organists have influenced you? So I mentioned early Tom Trenny was a big influence. Um, I've known Tom off and on um, since I was in high school. The American Guild of Organists has these pipe organ encounters that they do every summer. Mm -hmm. And so that was where I first met him, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and heard him perform. And he's just, he's a phenomenal performer. He's a great teacher, um, you know, and he's, he does a little bit of the non-traditional as well with doing the silent movies. Um, and so, you know, that was kind of kind of the inspiration for what I'm doing now. I've been very blessed to hear a lot of good organists. Um, David Higgs, who is a professor at Eastman, um, is a heavy influence on what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had the privilege of doing a couple master classes with him, which has been really cool. Um, and my own teacher, um, Dr. Marilyn Kaiser. You know, they've kind of they've kind of been my biggest influences on me. Um, you know, as an organist and as a performer, you know, their, their specific st- styles and how they interact with audiences mm-hmm. has really kind of shaped what I do. Nice. All right. For the fourth question, what, uh, what led you to your specific musical interests? So this could be a very long winded explanation, which I'm not going to give you. I'll give you, I will give you the, I'll give you the cliff notes version. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you probably must probably answered a bit of that in the second question, but I guess, yeah, you could do that. Um, 
So there was a point in my life when I was um, living in Florida, mm-hmm. um, and I always loved um, going to Disney World, mm-hmm. um, you know, always enjoyed the Disney movies. And I lived close enough that I was able to go, and I hadn't been there since I um, was in high school, mm-hmm. and was not in the greatest place in my life. Had a lot of not good things going on, and kind of just needed to escape one day. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to Disney. I need, I need to get away. I'm going to Disney World. It wasn't, you know, it was close enough that I could, I could make a day trip out of it. And so it was the first trip as I took as an adult. And, you know, it really kind of, um, um, I don't want to call it a refuge because that's not quite right, but it was just kind of like, you know, it was a nice little escape, yes. um, you know, and it kind of just gave me a chance to like put all the, the garbage that was going on aside, mm-hmm. you know, and, and really just kind of be a kid again. Of course, um, yeah, being a kid's at heart. Exactly. Um, you know, and I think that's a lot of what Disney inspires. Yes. And, you know, like I said, I always enjoy Disney music. And mm-hmm. so kind of that, that one trip kind of set off, mm-hmm. um, many more trips over the course of the next couple of years as I still lived down there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that was, but that was kind of what specifically drew me to Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always loved the music. It's well-written music. Um, you know, the message in it is great. Um, there's, there's so much complexity when you really start to look at all the different instruments that are in there and everything they do, there's so much richness and complexity to the music. Um, you know, and another thing that I value heavily is story. And so much of Disney, you know, the movies that they do, they tell them, they tell the story through music, mm-hmm. um, you know, and so that's, you know, a lot of what I love about what they do. Um, and of course, the beyond that, it's just fun music. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't listen to Under the Sea and not start tapping your toes, um, you know, so that's, that's kind of why I settled on Disney, mm-hmm. um, you know. I mean, there's a great fan base, but, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's just great music. Oh, yeah. So. Okay, now for the fifth one. What other IPs or intellectual properties would you like to explore in the future? One that I am actually have started um, mm-hmm. exploring a little bit um, is anime. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the Rooster Teeth series Ruby, mm-hmm. um, spelled R-W-B-Y. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, very popular anime series um and i believe it's web based like it's based on the internet it is yep okay. um yeah they're a, they're an internet based company um primarily going through youtube yeah. ruby is the the first american anime series mm-hmm. that has actually been exported to japan oh wow um so it's it's received a lot of success and yes. um uh, Jeff Williams is the composer that they've hired to do all their nice. music, and it's just it's it's really fun music. Nice. Um, and so I was like, well, let's see if this works on the organ. Um, and so I've done a couple arrangements of his, um, you know. But I kind of like to branch into anime, mm-hmm. um, and I've had a lot of requests for that as well, um, you know. And I'm also um, a big fan of musical theater. You know, so that's somewhere else that I would like to go with it because a lot of musical theater, symphonic accompaniment, <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, and maybe getting into some pop music, um, you know, love the music of Elton John, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and there's a lot more beyond that, you know, but that's right. someplace I'd like to go in the future as well. Now for the final question for Rob, what is in store for the future of your channel? So obviously I'm going to keep doing Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my, my goal is, you know, a new arrangement um, of a well-known Disney song every month. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to be able to up that to two, but, you know, they, as I said, as I said before, you know, they do take time to write. I have a couple of things in mind. Uh, I'm not going to give anything away here um, because there's a certain series um, that I that has some great music that I'd like to do it from, um, and I have an idea for it. I kind of want to do it in like a series of videos that are released in a short spirit, period of time, but I need to be able to get all those written. And so if it takes a month to write an arrangement, it'll be six months before that mm-hmm. comes out. Right. Now I'm going to keep doing, um, you know, vlogs about the organ, you know, talking about the organ and other things. Yes. Um, you know, so if there's anything you want to know about the organ, hop on my channel and let me know, because I'm always looking for content for my vlogs. So... Definitely, definitely let me know. Right. Um, you know, I'll do some classical music from here and there. It's, it, my classical music has not had the best reception. Mm-hmm. Um, I did classical music through my first year of the channel, mm-hmm. kind of for the naysayers in the organ world to be like, well, he's not a serious organist. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. um, 
And so that's there. But as I said, they didn't have nearly as, as good a reception as the arrangements. And so I'll, you know, when I find a piece that I like, I'm going to do it. I do have, I do have a specific, um, set of pieces, mm-hmm. um, that my first organ teacher gave to me, um, when I was in high school with the one request of, I would like you to make a recording of this because there is no recording of it. Ooh, wow. Or if there was, you know, it was a really old recording on vinyl that okay. doesn't exist anymore and you can't find. And so that was, you know, one yeah. of the requests that he made. And, and to quickly interject, uh, so basically the recording of that, uh, classical piece would pro- probably be the only modern one of that piece. Uh, that I know of, yes. Yeah, and it would make it probably extra special since it would be the only one. It would. And so that's that's something I actually have planned out for this summer. Um, it's a suite of oh. 12 pieces. Okay. And I, I've... I'm still going around on exactly how I want to release it. A okay. um, couple different thoughts, and mm-hmm. so, but that's that's one of the big projects okay. that's upcoming. Awesome. Um, you know, and just kind of branching out and seeing where things go. Awesome. Well, everyone, that was our quick Q and A with uh, Rob Lipinski here, aka Instant Organist. If you'd like to go over to, if you'd like to see the answers uh, for the Q and A uh, for me, go over to his channel. There will there will be a link in the description below, and also in the end cards. Thank you very much uh, for your time again, Rob, for this Q&A. I hope we'll see each other again in the near future. See you later.